Hey friends, this is Todd. i um, going to play on this diaprism on a harp, a song by Pierce Pettis called The Natchez Trace. If you hang around afterwards, I'll explain a little bit about how this setup works. Tunnel cuts into this greenness Under the roof of this wild place Down into the heart of darkness Along the Natchez tree There's no way to fill the silence Measure the lateness of his age For the turning of the seasons Along the Natchez Trail Show your hand, read your fortune and your fate. Oh, Mississippi, I'll trace your lifeline along the Natchez Trace. Journey is forever gone. Steps a slow and measured pace Always mindful of the planet you wait Along the Natchez Trail Oh, Mississippi I'd like to know you Show your face Lost in the dreamscape Some still wandering Along the Natchez Trace Journey is forever long Each step's a slow and Always mindful of the bandits who wait along the Natchez Trails, along the Natchez Trails, along the Natchez. Okay, the, the diaprism. The prism is a word that uh, Hal Weeks finally came up for this type of playing. And the original design was for a chromatic auto harp. And uh, I did the schematic for it, but he's the one who took it over and started playing it. And then Bay Allen became quite good at it. Um, but the idea of a prism. Hal wanted to connect the auto harp back to its origins as a, pris as a zither, so he put the Z in the middle of the word prism and spelled it P-R-I-Z-I-M to distinguish it from an actual prism, which, as you know, shows the various shadings and colors of a, of a rainbow or a kaleidoscope. But musically, what that means is that... Uh, 
We have more than major, minor, and seventh chords, which are common to most auto harps and most auto harp players. And other instruments like the piano and guitar and instruments where you can shape chords, you can add and subtract notes and alter the sound of a chord, uh, make it a different chord. Sometimes they're called color chords, thus the prism. So this is a diatonic version. This particular auto harp is set up to play in, in uh, B flat, F, and C. And yeah, those are the three major chords. And there's also the G here. And up here, here's the E flat. So it fleshes out those three keys. And you notice that it looked like I'm pushing one bar but I'm actually pushing two bars down to make those chords. And with these Evo buttons, these chord bars made by Jim Woods, uh, there's an overlap. And so there's a place where I can put my finger and push two bars with one finger. And the two bars are working together to create that C major chord. You can't really see that I'm doing that. You have to look closely, and then I use my index finger to get the F chord, and then just like the other Bowers type setup, my ring finger catches the five chord, and then I'm back to my one chord. So you say, well, if you're just playing major chord progressions, what's the point? Well, let's look at the C here. Here's a C major chord has the note C, E, and G. If I just toggle my finger over to the bass side, that C chord picks up one extra note. It picks up the two in the scale of C, so it adds a D. And the name of that chord is a C plus two or a C add nine sometimes. So I could be playing the C chord and just lift up changes the color. If I lift back and just play the center bar by itself, I have the C6 chord, which musically speaking is also the A minor 7. So that has the notes C, G plus the 6th of the scale of C, which is an A. So under one finger, I can get the major the add nine and the six, imperceptibly moving my finger, but the ear will catch those slight variations. Now over on this side, where I normally would have my minor chords, I have these major seventh chords, which I haven't quite learned how to use those as much, but they're used to create the, the relative minor chords. So if I'm on the center C bar, which is a C6, and I want to make an A minor like I used in that last song, then I just move my finger back and catch these two bars, the one on the treble side, the one in the middle. And there's my A minor, the relative minor of C. And if I drop my finger back, is the, it's not the C major 7th, it's the F major 7th, which is F-A-C-E, and the A-C-E gives us the A minor chord. So I also have a C major 7th over here on the treble side, and if I push um, B flat, F, the F and the C button down, Together I have the C5, which is a moment version of the C chord. So here we go. There's C, C add 9, C6, A minor, C minor 7th, and C5. And they're all grouped right around each other, and all I'm doing is moving my fingers around, catching two bars by pushing down on two buttons 
at a time or sometimes one button at a time. So what I like about this setup is that every bar is a chord, a, a normal chord. In the chromatic version, every bar creates a scale that you use to mix and match and create chords with. Um, so this is all, the, the center chords are all six chords. That's E flat six, B flat six, F six, C six, and G six. Then I just have my regular G7, C7, F7 along the bottom tier here. So I can add those in as, as I need or would want to. Um, over here on the bass side, I have the, the plus twos. And then most of these are major sevens over here on the treble side. There's one unusual chord up here. I'm not quite sure how to name it, but it helps to create the C minor chord that goes with the E flat. Anyway, it's just a, a different approach to playing the auto harp and having more chords available to you, just like a guitar player would have or a piano player might have or anybody else who's used to shaping chords and, and adding color to them, thus a prism. And in this case, the diaprism is the diatonic version of it. Um, these chord bars, like I said, were made for an elbow harp <coughs> or like the chords on an elbow harp. The end covers are left over from a Gordon Baker set of chord bars and the auto harp with the fine tuners and the pickup built in is a pretty sturdy, rugged, American-made Model 15 EBHRBB, meaning a B model black auto harp. And sometimes they're called the Phoenix. And the Phoenix has the, the angular side, like the Festival model, which was made at the same time, as opposed to a more rounded contour. All right, well, there's the uh, diaprism for you, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me on Facebook or email me at toddsmusicalpettingzoo at gmail.com. Talk to you later.